what do you think psychedelics do to the human mind? It seems they take the human mind to some interesting places. Is that just a little uh, hack, a visual hack, or is there some profound expansion of the mind? So let's see. I I don't believe in magic. I believe in uh, I believe in uh, in science in in causality. Uh, still, let's say, and then as I said, like I think that the brain that the our subjective experience of reality is a. Uh, we, we live in the simulation run by our brain, mm. and the simulation that our brain runs, they can be very pleasant or very hellish. Drugs, they are changing some hyperparameters of the simulation. It is possible, thanks to change of these hyperparameters, to actually look back on your experience and even see that the given things that we took for granted, they are changeable. So they allow to have a, a amazing perspective. There is also, for instance, the fact that after DMT, people can see the full movie inside of their head gives me further belief that the brain can generate the full movie, that the brain is actually learning the model of reality to mm -hmm. such extent that it tries to predict what's going to happen next. Yeah, very high resolution, so it can replay reality, essentially. A extremely high resolution. Yeah, and it's also kind of interesting to me that somehow there seems to be some similarity between these uh, drugs and meditation itself. And I actually started even these days to think about meditation as a psychedelic. Mm. Um, Do you practice meditation? I, I, I practice meditation. I mean, I went a few times on the re retreats and it feels after like after second or third day of meditation, uh, th th there, is a, there is almost like a sense of, you know, tripping. What, what does a meditation retreat entail? So, I mean, you, you wake up uh, early in the morning and you meditate for an extended period of time. Uh, and Alone? That, uh, Sorry uh, to keep in touch. Yeah, so it's optimized, even though there are other people, it's uh, optimized for isolation. So you don't speak with anyone, you don't actually look into other people's eyes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you sit on the chair. Um, say Vipassana meditation tells you uh, to focus on the breath. So you try to put... Uh, all the all attention into breathing and uh, breathing in and breathing out, and the um, crazy thing is that as you focus attention like that, uh, after some time, there's some starts coming back like uh, some memories that you completely forgotten. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like uh, that you have a mailbox and then you, you know you are just like uh, archiving email one by one. Mm -hmm. And at some point, at some point, there is this like a amazing feeling of getting to mailbox zero, <laughs> zero emails, and uh, it's very pleasant. It's it's kind of it's 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 crazy to me that uh, that once you resolve these uh, inner sto stories or like uh, inner traumas, mm -hmm. then once there is nothing uh, left the default uh, state of human mind is extremely peaceful and happy extreme like a uh, some sense it it feels that the it feels at least to me the way how when i was a child that i can look at any object and it's very beautiful i have a lot of curiosity about the simple things mm -hmm. and that's where usually meditation takes me are you, what are you experiencing? Are you just taking in simple sensory information and are just enjoying the rawness of that sensory information? So there's no, there's no memories or all that kind of stuff. You're just enjoying being? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, still there is a, the, the, it's, it's, thoughts are slowing down. Sometimes they pop up, but it's also s somehow the extended meditation takes you to the space that they are, way more friendly, you way more positive. Um, there is also this, uh, this thing that uh, we've extra, like, uh, it almost feels that the, it almost feels that the, we are constantly getting a little bit of a reward function and we are just spreading this reward function on various activities. Mm -hmm. But if you stay still 
for extended period of time, it kind of accumulates, accumulates, accumulates. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a there is a sense there is a sense that at some point it passes some threshold and it feels as drop is falling into kind of ocean of love and bliss. And that's like a mm. th this is like a very pleasant and that's what I'm saying like a that corresponds to the subjective experience. Some people, uh, I guess, in spiritual community, they describe it that that's the reality. Mm -hmm. And I would say I believe that there are like a, all sorts of subjective experience that one can have. And uh, I believe that, for instance, meditation might take you to the subjective experiences, which are very pleasant, collaborative. Mm -hmm. And I would like a world to move toward a more collaborative uh, uh, place. Yeah, I would say that's very pleasant, and I enjoy yeah. doing stuff like that. I I, uh, I wonder how that maps to your uh, mathematical model of love with uh, the reward function combining a bunch of things. It, it seems like our life then is we're just we have this reward function, and we're accumulating a bunch of stuff in it with weights. It's like uh, m like multi objective, and what meditation is, is you just remove them, remove them until the weight on one uh, or just a few is, is very high. And that's where the pleasure comes from. Yeah, so something similar how I'm thinking about this. So I told you that there is this like a, that there is a story of who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think almost about it as a, you know, text prepended to GPT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other, some people refer to it as ego. Okay. Yeah. It's like a story. <laughs> who 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 you are, okay? So ego is the prompt for GPT three or yeah. GPT. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's the description of you. And then with meditation, you can get to the point that actually you experience things without the prompt. Mm -hmm. And uh, you experience things like uh, as they are. You are not biased toward the description how they're supposed to be. Uh that's very pleasant. And then with respect to the reward function, uh, it's possible to get to the point that the there is dissolution of self, and therefore you can say that the, you are you are having a you are or like a, your brain attempts to simulate the reward function of everyone else or like everything. That's that there is this like a love which feels like a oneness with everything, and that's also you know very beautiful, very pleasant. At some point, you you might have a lot of altruistic thoughts during the, that moment, and then the self uh, always comes back. How would you recommend? if somebody is interested in meditation, like a big thing to take on as a project, would you recommend a meditation retreat? How many days? What kind of thing would you recommend? I think that actually retreat is the way to go. Um, it almost uh, feels that, uh, um, as I said, like uh, meditation is a psychedelic, but uh, when you take it in the small dose, you might barely feel it. Mm -hmm. Once you get the high dose, actually you're gonna feel it. Mm -hmm. um, so even cold turkey, if you haven't really seriously meditated for a prolonged period of time, just go to a retreat. Yeah, well, how like many a, days? How I many days? Start weekend one. Weekend, so like two, three days. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, it's interesting that first or second day, it's hard, and at some point it becomes easy. There's a lot of seconds in a day. How hard is the meditation retreat? Just sitting there in a chair. So the thing is actually, it literally just depends on your uh, on the your own framing. Like if you are in the mindset that you are waiting for it to be over mm -hmm. or you are waiting for uh, nirvana to happen, mm -hmm. it will be very unpleasant. Yeah. And in some sense, even the difficulty, it's not even in the lack of being able to speak with others. Like uh, you are sitting there, your legs will hurt from sitting. In terms of like the practical things, do you experience kind of discomfort, like physical discomfort of just sitting, like your your butt being numb, your legs being sore, all that kind of stuff? Yes, you experience it, and then the the they teach you to observe it rather. And it's like a the, the crazy thing is, you at first might have a feeling toward trying to escape it, yeah, and that becomes very apparent that that's extremely unpleasant, mm -hmm. and then you just just observe it. And uh, at some point, it it just becomes uh, it just is. <laughs> it's like a, I remember with Ilya told me some time ago that uh, you know he takes a cold shower, mm -hmm. and his mindset of taking a cold shower was to embrace suffering. Yeah, 
Excellent. I'm, I do the same. The, this is your style? Yeah, it's my style. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so my style is actually, uh, I also sometimes take cold showers. Yeah. It is purely observing how the water goes through my body, like a purely being present, not trying to escape from there. Yeah. And I would say then it actually becomes pleasant 